say the root of evil. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash the root of evil dot pdf. The desire for worldly gain, accolades, and prestige are all rooted in man's desire to be lifted up in the eyes of others. I mentioned this briefly last week, but this is very, very, this is something that you need to make sure is not in your heart. The desire to be seen and known. The desire to be recognized, seen, and known speaks of an insecurity which can be weaponized against you by the devil. Whenever you got to toot your own horn and always mention your accomplishments, always accidentally bring folks to your house so they can see your trophy case. You having a barbecue so everybody can come in your living room and see all your certificates. You know, because we don't talk about that around here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the love of the Lord and family and love and all that. But you have to just keep mentioning your accomplishments. Or you have to constantly seek the approval of others based on what you have achieved. Those are things you got to be very careful of because that desire, the enemy will weaponize and use that against you and you might not ever really be saved. See there? See, you didn't think it was that serious, did you? Yes, it's that serious. A person that always needs the accolades and approval and notoriety and all of those things, it's hard for them to be saved because in order to be saved you got to deny that that's hard yeah folks even take that's all the Hebrew Israelite that's all that is they're out there they're not out there to save people they're out there to show their knowledge it's still a show and they want a debate debating is arrogance there's an element of arrogance that follows those that like to win debates. Look, somebody don't want to agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, you want to win. So you got to be careful with that. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the what? Root of how much evil? Root of all evil. This is the part, though, about this passage that is so important. Which while some coveted after, meaning some want money so bad, they have erred from the faith and then pierced themselves through with what? Chasing money. You know, chasing money can ruin your life. Chasing accolades. All of it's the same, money and fame. It's all the same. You chasing that. You got to step on people. You got to betray people. You got to lie. You got to promote yourself and forget about others. Yeah. Folks, kids crazy because their parents chase money. Just talking about a situation even with uh, elder, the elders. I was talking about somebody I know who's famous and now their family is just falling apart over money. Over money. Chasing money. Yeah. It's not worth it. Look at somebody say it's not worth it. What would it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? Amen. And even just working up too much. You know, you can work too much. You know, you got to trust God to multiply your money. See, God has a multiplication system. <laughs> His multiplication system works with your health. <laughs> yeah, because if you overwork, you're going to get sick. And then you can't work and you're no good to nobody. 
But if you pace yourself and entrust God's multiplication, that means give and it shall be given. Not work and it shall be given. Good measure. Place that. Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down, shaking. The, you got to take a break. You got to be there for your family. Amen. Church. Yeah. I mean, it's very noble of you to want to work all the time, but hey, then when your health is gone, was it worth it? Well, I'm preaching all kinds of messages in this message. I know, and I'm talking to myself because I used to be like that. Some of y'all remember, I just didn't know how to take a break. But I start getting around some older guys and they start telling me, see, this health problem right here is because I didn't slow down. This Right here, pointing at stuff. This right here happened because I wouldn't. And they start teaching me, hey, man, you better slow down. You can't keep up with God. Amen. And then you got to wonder, why am I working so much? What am I working for? Am I trying to prove something? I'm preaching in this place. So many pierce themselves through with many sorrows because of their love for money. People that seek after riches and fame are only satisfied when others know what they have. So ain't nobody seeking to be rich and wanting to be rich and then they get rich and they don't tell nobody. That was the whole point for people to know. Right? Right? They speak swelling words about their accomplishments to lift themselves up before others. Now, Proverbs tells us plainly, let another man praise thee. You don't do it. Let another man praise thee. Not thine own mouth. A stranger and not thine own lips. In other words, shut up about what you can do. Amen. Quit always bringing it up. And then wonder why don't nobody want to come around you. People get tired of that. They get tired of getting compared to you and you always talking about what you, nobody want to hear that. Sometimes we want to talk about the Dallas Mavericks. I be, amen. Folks get tired of that, man. They don't want to just keep hearing what you're able to do. So the Bible says, let somebody else do that. That way you won't be lifted up in pride and arrogance. Amen? Amen. The deep desire for real, I know. The deep desire for riches and fame is a Luciferian desire, which is supported and cultivated by Lucifer himself. So if you have a desire to be rich and famous, is from the devil. You have a desire to take Hollywood by storm, to ra- rise up on the R&B charts, to be the next phenom influencer online. If that is your desire, it came from Satan. Satan. Because none of God's men, nobody God called in the Bible ever talked that way. The only example we have of somebody trying to beat a bomb and blowing up is this passage right here. And this passage is about Lucifer. Lucifer, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. That means I'm going to blow up. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's a superstar. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I will be like a God. That desire is from this dude. So if that is in you, and don't you murmur under your lips, well, God has already shown me that I would be No, (laughs) no, this is where that's coming from. I promise. I promise you, this is where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. So the beats you making 
they may not ever get all the way there. I heard some of your beats. You ain't finna be like the most high with those beats. <laughs> so quit. Just give it up. But that's where that desire comes from. That desire to be higher than high. That desire to be lifted up. And that's why those dudes, when they want to get there, they'll have to do things to get there. You don't just blow up. It's all planned. There's a path. Remember I had a record company and I had an artist. I ain't going to call his name, but everybody knows him. But he was on, this, on my record company and I, I produced his album and some record companies wanted to sign him and so he decided to go to Atlanta and um, because they wanted to sign him. It was a company there called, back before it was Verity, I think it was called Atlantic International Records, Air? Yeah, Air, Atlantic International Records, that's what it was. Before Verity and that big merger and all of that, it was Air. And uh, he went to meet with my music and he, you know, his demo, his album or whatever, went and met with him and everything. And he called me from the pay phone at the hotel. I said, hey man, what's up? He's like, say man, you ain't gonna believe what just happened. I said, what just happened? He said, man, I came in and we were supposed to meet in the conference room, but they moved the, the meeting up to a hotel room. I said, really? I said, I mean, did you go? He's like, well, yeah, I went up there. He said, but when I went to the door and opened the door, the dude that I was meeting with opened the door in his underwear. This is a true story. This is a world-renowned artist I'm talking about, too. I said, well, what'd you do? Don't you take my music in there, boy. He said, no. Nah. He said, I told the dude. He's like, man, what are y'all trying to do? He said, hey, man, this is the only way to make it in the gospel music industry. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, that's a true story. So yeah, so if you want to be famous, want to see your name in lights, you got to go in that room. You got to go in the draws room. That's the draws room. Bro, I will ride around and listen to my music. I, Sam, what? I ride around and listen to my old beats all day long. And that's what I told him. Give me back my music. I'll enjoy it in my car. Yeah. But that's what they do when they want that level of fame. You want that level of fame, only one person's going to give it to you. God ain't going to give you that level of fame. Do you know Jesus denied that level of fame? On the mountain, he said, I don't want it. Nope, nope, I don't need it. When the devil was tempting him. Then when he would heal people, he said, nope, don't go tell nobody. I don't want to make a name or reputation for myself. Because it's not about me. I'm here to do the will of the Father. Jesus got famous anyway, but that wasn't his plan. That wasn't what was motivating him. So how can it be what's motivating you? Why is God going to do something with you that he didn't do with his own son? Well, people know you, you, you. People know you. <laughs> that ain't because I'm trying to be known. Ain't no billboards around here with my face on them. They, they come to me. Amen. 
I've already preached, but I'm going to continue. Some folks just shook up. That meeting, there was a meeting in the... In, in, <laughs> yes, how you think I felt? I'm just telling y'all stuff that happened for real. Yeah, this is way back in 2002. No, this is before the truth on hip hop. This is the 90s. But this is what folks do. That whole system, God allowed me to go through that whole system and see what it takes to be famous. And I had a demon that I was casting out of somebody. Tell me what it takes. And he knew. He said, when you want to make it big in the industry, I can get you. A demon told me that. Yeah. So we happy, PJ. Hey, we happy doing our music. We just do our little music over here. Play these instruments. Y'all get the little CD. J. Brian, and we just happy doing your... Just J. Brian. I, hey. We don't have to blow up. Amen. Amen. That's costly. I'm just giving y'all information so you'll know I know what I'm talking about. Somebody might have just walked in here and don't know. That's why we protect our children and a lot of them have talent, but we ain't gonna let them get out there like that. Amen. Man's desire to be godlike and have more than others or be higher than others fuels his what? You want to separate yourself from God? Then desire to be like a God. That's what happened in the garden. They ate from the tree. Their eyes were open and they became godlike. Separated themselves from God. That's what the devil wanted. If I can grant you the ability to be big in your own mind, it will separate you from God. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. So, the scripture tells us, Jesus said to the disciples, hey, if any man will come after me, he got to do what? The opposite of blowing up. You got to deny all of that. That desire, everybody has it. It will come up in everyone, especially if you have talent. It's going to rise up, but you have to deny it. Deny means that there was something there. You just didn't give it prevalence. You didn't give it power. You didn't give in to it. You denied it. Man, you don't think I wanted my music to blow up? At one point, man, my phone was ringing off the hook, folks trying to get me to do stuff. But I denied that because I knew that was temporary and I wasn't doing the, the room ritual. <laughs> so this ain't going to work for me. If this is the way in, I pass. We ain't doing that. Over some music? Bruh. But you got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. There can only be one plan. Look at somebody say one plan. One. There can only be one plan active in a man's heart. Your heart don't have room for two plans. <laughs> There's only... One, there's only room for one plan. You can't serve two plans. One plan. God's plan or your plan. That's it. The devil's plan is your plan. So only God's plan or your plan. It's only room for one. You have to make that choice. Whose plan? Amen. I thank God for these single women. We got a lot of nice single women here. Amen. Amen. I'm praying God marry them all off. 
I mean, not off in, in here, y'all, you know. But, but they, at any moment, any one of these ladies can go to a different kind of church and pair up with somebody real quick in one of their co-ed uh, singles bashers. Yeah, they can go do it. But that would be their plan. But yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You, you could go chase that. But man, if you're going to church for dudes, that's your plan. If you're going to church for women, that's your plan. And there can only be one plan active. And God's plan moves slow. Told y'all last week, you know why his plan moves slow? Because everybody's plan is mixed in his plan. So it's not just you he's working with. He got to get your husband from wherever he is, somehow bring you, bring him to wherever you are, and everybody in between, he got to work through all of that to get his will accomplished. And you, Lord, what's taking so long? Well, are you ready? And is he ready? A lot of dynamics involved. That can only be, look at somebody say, one plan. One plan. There's only one plan. Proverbs 19 tells us many are the plans in the mind of a man. I'm wondering if you got a lot of plans in your head. Many of many plans. Oh, there's many. Many plans. Some of y'all done OD'd on plans. In your <laughs> Some of y'all got to rest your head. It's so many plans. So many plans. But it is God's plan, the purpose of the Lord, which is God's plan, that will stand. Amen. Only God's plan, what God purposes, will stand. Amen? Amen. That's why we go, we go on fast to surrender our plans. Amen. Amen? We pray, surrender our plans. Can I keep going? Somebody's still thinking about the hotel room. You should. If you're thinking like that, then God wants you to know something. Oh, this is, this, this is not a good deal. I'm not accepting that plan. You already on fire. You ain't went to hell yet. Your hand is on fire. Oh, it gets hotter from there. Man's plan needs the approval of man because it is absent of God's approval. So riches and fame prove that man's plan is successful in the eyes of others. So when man goes on their plan and does it and you see him rich and famous and all on TV, money and fame and everything else, you see all of that, it looks successful. But the emptiness remains because man's plan lacks God's support. What is that emptiness? Well, as famous as they are, why they drinking every night? As famous as they are, why they gotta smoke something all the time? Famous as they are, why they family jacked up? Famous as they are, why they kids don't like them? Famous as they are, why they can't stay married to nobody? Famous as they are, all that money? You mean with all that money you can't buy happiness? Money don't change anything. It just amplifies everything. <laughs> Amplify. Money will show you who you really are. Money gives you the means to be who you really are. Some folks broke right now because God wants you saved. <laughs> See, some, nobody want to clap on that. Yeah, you ain't rich. You got rich, you'd be crazy. You crazy with change in your pocket. Don't need no money. You don't need the kind of money that folds. <laughs> you 
you would be wild as a road lizard. You ever seen a road lizard? Road lizard. Because you know they, they got to go through the cars. <laughs> but the emptiness remains because man's plans lacks God's support. God created all of us to need him. When God made man, he made man for himself. You can always tell the men that aren't with God, something's always wrong with them. Galatians 1 and 10, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So if I got to please men, if I got to go in the hotel room to please the men, am I a servant of Christ? How you getting a record deal doing God's music? It's an interesting story. I talk about it a lot, refer to it a lot, but I want to read it today. It's about Simon Magus. Simon the sorcerer, as he's become known as. And the book of Acts tells us this is when the Holy Spirit began to fall, when the began to fall on the Gentiles in Samaria and the ones that weren't of the original jury and Jewry. And Simon, the Bible says, well, let me just read it. But there was a certain man named Simon, called Simon, which before time in the same city, he used sorcery, which is pharm pharmacos or pharmakia, which is where we get our word for pharmaceuticals. So he used sorcery and bewitched, tricked, bewitched witchcraft the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. So he was using potions and powers to make people believe he was doing signs and wonders. Okay? To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest. So this is everybody saying that this man is the great power of who? God. So they believed he was a Powerful man from God, but he was using sorcery, witchcraft, magic, all of these things to bewitch people. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with his sorcery. So he had a reputation of, you know, maybe calling out credit card numbers or whatever the prophets are doing now. Your address and go to your house. There's a check for a million dollars in your, in your mailbox. I, I wish the whole church would dismiss and go to that house. Let's go. Hey, hey, stop. Let's go. Everybody, let's go. Let's go now. But he was doing all of the stuff that these famous prophets do on Instagram now. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself did what? Believed, believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered. This word just stuck out to me like a ton of bricks when I put this on here. That word wondered. He wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. He was already in trouble right there. Why are you around here wondering? Think about it. This is a man who used to do this with potions and trickery. Now he's watching them do it with the real power of God. So he's wondering. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Wondering. Being amazed at it. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you should be asking, hey, can I be filled with the Holy Ghost too? He never asked that. 
He watched others be filled, but never asked to be filled himself because he wondered, how can I be the one doing the filling? See, the ones that are being filled aren't the ones getting the what, what. It's the ones doing the filling. And I want to be one of those. He wondered. That word's there for a reason. Beholding the miracles and signs which were done. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, what did he do? Offer the money. Hey, y'all, make me one of y'all. Because I've been sitting here wondering, how can I be one of y'all? Give me also this power. So whoever, hand, lay, whoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, see, now you done raised up in rank. <laughs> First it was Philip. Yeah, come on, you know. Yeah, come on, everybody. You know, I'm just trying to help. But now you done went and got a superior general. Yes. Peter said unto him, man, your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You don't know what you talking about. You don't even have no part in this. I don't even know if you really save. Because your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of thy, this thy wickedness. And pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. Now, this is where the Holy Ghost goes to work in. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then Simon said, pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. So we don't, the Bible doesn't tell us what happened with Simon. You know, he made, hey, pray for me. I, I don't want to be like this. And, you know, because everything was new at this time. So... We give time in the past, we might see him in heaven. Might not. We don't know. But this is the story, and this story is very powerful because it shows how you can have something inside of you that manifests at the wrong time. And even though he believed, it yet manifested because he hadn't dealt with it. Peter told him how to deal with it. But because he hadn't dealt with it, you there while the Holy Ghost is falling on folks, something manifested in you that might cost you your salvation. Simon was a man that made a name for himself using potions and sorcery to trick people into believing he was a God. When he heard the gospel, the Bible says he believed and was converted. But when he saw the power that the disciples operated in, he offered to buy it. So he could use it as he did previously with potions. This would have kept his reputation great and given him the income that a great one should have. So he was still trying to be great. Now when you come to Christ, you can't be great anymore. You must deny yourself. All the great ones in here, you can't be great anymore. I told you where that desire comes from. Simon's problem was that he had some issues from his past that came to destroy his conversion. Did y'all hear that? He had issues from his past that came to destroy his conversion. The gall of bitterness that Peter said he perceived that on him. The gall of bitterness means that he dealt with something bitter. Something had poisoned him in his past and made him feel he needed the approval of others. Bitterness. He was poisoned. Many of us, because of something that happened to us earlier in life, we were poisoned by it. Made us bitter. And it will come up right when God is ready to do something in your life. We don't know what occurred, but it definitely made him set out to be a big deal in the eyes of people because he was using potions to do it. 
made him want to be a big deal in the eyes of people to overcome the trauma of his past. The bond of iniquity, this Peter also mentioned this. That means that the love of fame and money had him bound to doing wrong. So he was doing wrong to be lifted up in the eyes of people. That's the bond of iniquity. The Greek word for iniquity is adikia, which means wrongdoing. There is also a Greek goddess named Adikia. And Adikia was personified as a demon spirit of injustice and wrongdoing. See, that's why this Greek stuff is always related to satanic stuff. Because what the Greeks did in Greek mythology, they named a god after every demon. They basically gave demons a face and a personality and a Wikipedia page. Yeah. They named the demons and the demons were personified so that people could make statues of them and worship them. And this demon of wrongdoing is adikia, which is the Greek word iniquity. And iniquity we know is also sin or doing wrong, wrongdoing, right? She was depicted as an ugly barbarian woman with tattooed skin. Oh, there's so much to this. She had tattooed skin way back then. Then the female goddess Dyke beats her with a club. See, I used that word Niger, and now we got the word Dyke. All this stuff is coming from. It's so funny how we just say those words and we don't really know where they come from. Oh, she's a dyke. You don't even know where that comes from. That comes from a burly woman with a club. <laughs> tattooed, beating a, beating a tattooed woman. So all of this stuff has an origin and it's so funny how people are turning into these things. Yeah. Because with every pledge, when you pledge into the fraternities and sororities and all this, you awaken these gods and goddesses. Because that's who you are pledging to. And they're promising you prominence. So you can be lifted up before people. The desire that is from Lucifer. These spirits were in Simon. And they caused him to react to the gospel in the wrong way. His love for money and fame trumped his love for the truth of the word momentarily. And this came out in his question to the apostles. When the love of money is born in someone, it will always lead them away from the truth. And cause them, and cause their bitterness from their upbringing to manifest into wrongdoing summary the gall of bitterness and bond of iniquity that Peter mentioned are the spiritual states driven by emotion that causes people or cause people to desire riches and fame bitterness iniquity when you grow up in the gall of bitterness, that means you're bitter about something that happened in your upbringing. Whether your parents got divorced, whether your parents abandoned you, whether you, you were abandoned, whether you didn't have parents. Whatever the case, that bitterness will manifest. You know, people, Hollywood, when you wanted to become an actor or an actress, they used to say all you had to do was go in these certain, back in the day, these certain... Um, Malt shops, soda shops, soda shop, that's it. You go sit on the stools in these soda shops and directors would come in and discover the next actor. You know, and most of the famous people back then in the day, they were the ones that were in this soda shop. Well, they were runaways. They would run away from home because of deficits in their home. Those were the ones that the directors would want. If you had parents, the directors didn't want to fool with you. Because you're not going to do whatever they say do. You don't want it bad enough. 
you have options. They want people that have no other option. This is the only escape from your reality. So they can make you do anything. They can broom you. Yeah, they bring them into Disney, the childhood actors. That's why they want you. They want to get you as a child. Start brooming you as a child. Passing you around. Through sex trafficking and all of this. They want somebody like that because that person is at their end. They have nothing else. Yeah. But if you got a father that's strong in your life, they don't want to fool with you. Especially when it's time to sign a contract. They're doing that with sports now. They don't want guys with strong fathers. They want the dude that only has his mother. And this is all he can do. Said New Edition signed their record deal and went all over the world. Went on tour, everything. It got their first check. It was a dollar. You can't buy candy, <laughs> popcorn, none of their songs. They can't buy nothing in none of their songs with a dollar thirty-eight. A dollar thirty-eight. But do you want it bad enough? Because Bruh, we, okay, y'all, oh, 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 y'all ain't happy with this dollar thirty-eight? We'll go find five other little boys in the hood. You're not special. How bad do you want the fame? But all of them came from broken homes. Not one daddy was in the meeting. Not one father in the meeting. They knew what they was doing. Can I keep preaching in here? This message is too hardcore for somebody. That's okay. So these are the world's most dangerous people because they will do whatever is required to achieve their goals. Even at the cost of their own lives and the lives of others and their eternal destination. Satanists know that Satan is doomed. Satanists know that Satan is doomed. Do I need to say that again? Those that follow Satan know that Satan is doomed. If you know Satan, you know there's a God that created him. So they know he don't outrank God. So why are you with him? They agree to take his side just to prove to the world that they are somebody. They participate in secret orders, Greek letter organizations, satanic rituals. Or just plain old backbiting, betrayal, and extortion for money and power. Whatever it takes, they'll do it just for fame. To prove to somebody else that they are somebody. A person that is in this state is evil. We cannot allow the world to define evil. Or they will typically charge it to abuse, murder, or violating the person's rights. But iniquity is harming others for your own gain as well. So when you make the music that harms others, that's iniquity. When you do a collaboration with an artist that's harming others, that's iniquity. When you share the stage with them, that's iniquity. Politicians must promote evil alongside what is deemed morally right if they want to be elected. If you want to be elected, you got to promote evil too. It's Pride Month. You got to promote Pride Month if you're a politician. Artists, whether secular or gospel, must promote evil music if they want fame and stardom. You don't ever hear him coming out talking against the other artists. Act 
actors, entertainers must side with evil if they want to be famous and keep working. Many preachers have to pledge in secret orders or pledge to Greek gods in order to have a following because without it, they will not get what they want. The root of all evil is the love of money. When we seek after fame, fortune, and notoriety, we will eventually find ourselves bound by iniquity. But when we practice denying ourselves, we can live lives pleasing unto God. Amen? Please hear this. Godliness with contentment is what? So to God, great gain is godliness with what? Contentment. Being cool with where you are. How many people cool with where they are? I'm good. Look at somebody say, I'm good. I mean, it may be a little rocky right now, but I'm good. I'd rather have a little rocky. I'm good. Yes. Amen. I used to tell my wife that all the time. We had no money. No money. I tell her, I said, man, if this is the way it's going to be, I'm good. Yes. Sometimes I have to say it with tears in my eyes because I have to turn something down that would have gave us a whole lot more. But I meant it. If this is the way it's going to be, I'm good. Yes. This is what God wants because there's only room for one plan in my heart. And I want God's plan. Amen. Amen. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can't carry, we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothes let us be there with content. Yes. Amen. Ain't nobody in here lacking. Boy, I see these Jordans everybody rocking. Ain't nobody in here lacking. If you lack, just wait for the next swap. Amen. Amen. You'll be fresh and clean. But they that will be rich. Mm, mm fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which do what? Drown men in destruction and perdition. Everyone stand to your feet. Some folks, you know, when I uh, was doing this message, Lord spoke something to me and told me, you know, some people, the root of evil was spoken on them by their parents. Because all they heard was, what you going to get? What can you get? Make sure you get yours. Get out there and get yours and heard that all their life. And so they wonder, why am I just motivated by that? It was spoken over you during your development. So, yeah, that could be a struggle. For you to constantly feel you need to prove yourself to others because what was spoken over you. But as a believer, we can't be about that. As a believer, we have to deny that. So I'm going to ask you to come up. I'm going to pray with you. If you know that that's something that you've been struggling with, something that was placed in you maybe, something that was spoken over you, and you want that finally silenced and done with and Man, I just, want to, I just want God's plan, period. Just come on up, whoever you are. You don't have to prove it, man. I'm telling you, dysfunction and trauma will make you live a life trying to prove your value, prove your worth, prove you are better. And God doesn't want you doing that. That's not from God. That desire is not from God. I 
try to be careful with. I've always tried to be careful with my kids, not to push them to be something and push them to be known and piggyback off what I'm doing and all of that. I just, man, I wanted them to be able to choose their own way what God wanted them to do. And it just, you know, that's, I, I know that. I, I know that feeling and it's just, man, because people will clap for you and applaud you, but they don't care. They don't care about you. They don't, they don't care about you. I promise you they don't. They, that, that clapping and that, ooh, that was good and oh, you did that, man. Mm -mm. I'm not making no decisions based on that. I need God's approval. I got room in my heart for one plan. I want to ride or die with the Lord. One plan. Ride or die. Me and God, one plan. Whatever your plan is, I'll be happy with it because if you are my manufacturer and you made me, then you know what's best for me. You created me, you know what's best for me. Not somebody's applause. Not somebody's opinion. Not somebody's old warped path to success, path to stardom and path to fame and fortune. Some old gay mess. I ain't got to get involved in that. Do what God says. I want God's plan for my life, for my family. I want God's plan. God's plan only. That's it. Many of you came here. You came to this church for that. We got so many former recording artists, musicians, and everything out here. Everybody, probably half this church could make a record. But you said, you know what? I need to sow into my own family. I want, I want, I want God's plan. I want my kids to see God's plan exercised in my life so they'll know what decisions to make when they get older. But it's a struggle sometimes when you know you could have blown up. You know you got talent. You know you got ability. And the devil's always scratching on your window with them nails. Telling you what you could have been and should have done. and Trying to rekindle an old fire in you to do something. Your kids are watching you. So you got to deny that. Tell it no. Tell it no. Amen. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this message. We know that the love of money, which encompasses fame and fortune and stardom and all of that, is the root of all evil. And this is why people do evil things. They do evil things to others. They do evil things, evil rituals, satanic rituals and sex trafficking and abuse and brooming children and sacrificing children and just all kinds of pledges and secret orders and the OTO and Greek letters and just all of these different things for fame and fortune, God. Masonry and just pledging into all of these man-made Luciferian av avenues to reach stardom and fame just for an audience, just to mount a congregation. And we know, Father God, that the desire for those things comes from the devil. It was never your plan for man to be lifted up. It was never your plan for us to be you. So, Father God, we ask right now, first, that you search our hearts. Search our hearts for any remnants of this. Whether it was spoken on us in our childhood, whether it was created through some traumatic event, whether it was something we promised ourselves and wrote on paper and wrote as a creed for ourselves what we're going to be what we're going to accomplish what we're going to do all of these things father God to be lifted up to overcome the deficit of a broken home a missing father or molestation or abuse or neglect 
abandonment, whatever is driving that desire to be lifted up, God. We ask that you go in and heal it right now. Heal that area right now, God. Heal that area right now, that desire to be special or to feel special because we weren't special in our home. We weren't special to our father. We weren't special in the areas where we should have been. So now we're seeking worldly approval. We're seeking social media approval. We're seeking all kinds of things to feel special. And the enemy is weaponizing that to mess with our salvation and mess with our conversion like he did Simon. Bringing that back up to hinder our forward progress. So Father, we ask that you search our hearts right now. Any, any trace of it, remove affectation from our hearts right now. Remove the pretender performance spirit right now. Remove that spirit that needs the applause of others, that iniquity that is linked to it. Remove it, Father God, so we'll be free from it and won't be driven by it and we'll be satisfied with who you made us to be. Satisfied with what your plan is for us. Father God, there's room in our hearts for only one plan and we give that room to you right now in the name of Jesus come on and lift your hands Father God that room belongs to you fill our hearts Lord fill our hearts fill our hearts fill our hearts Lord fill us right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we only want to be approved of by you we only need your approval we only need your plan father God fill our hearts with your plan in Jesus name we pray thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah You know, I got so, so, so many stories. I should have wrote them down when they was happening, but I didn't. But man, I just know so much about this subject. It would just blow your mind. But there is something that the Bible says that's very important to this right now. And it, it just reminds me of, well, a guy I know went to an audition with uh, Mark Wahlberg. Wesley Snipes and Will Smith basically came in this director and he told them all he was asking them questions about their childhood and you know if anything had happened to them if their father was there blah blah, blah. what he was looking for strange as it may sound he was looking for a root of bitterness he was probing them for a root of bitterness. Found it in Will, they let him through. Found it in Mark, he was Marky Mark then. They let him through. Found it in Wesley Snipes, they let him through. And this guy, they didn't find it because he came from a Christian upbringing. So he didn't get through. So you only have seen him on, you know, few things, Steve Harvey, little, 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 little roles couldn't make the big roles because he didn't have a root of bitterness. Now the Bible tells us that if you fall short of the grace of God, a root of bitterness springs up and says it springs up and then it defiles many. These directors were looking for somebody that they could use to amplify sin. Sell sin. The root of bitterness. 
That's what it is in you. Whatever happened to you, whatever trauma you experienced, whatever happened in your childhood to your family, whatever, it creates bitterness. And that root, if God doesn't cut it, it'll grow. And if it grows, the Bible says, it springs up and defiles many. So we want to make sure no matter what happened to us, that doesn't dictate what we do next. Do you hear me? Whatever happened in your childhood, that doesn't speak for your entire life. Doesn't speak for your future. You can be exactly what God wants you to be if you yield your heart to him and allow him to keep, you know, a root's going to keep growing. Allow him to keep cutting it. Every time it comes up, up, now you don't, devil, cut it so that you can live for God and not be motivated by that. Amen? Amen. Hug somebody and say, Listen, y'all, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Listen. This is real. This is real. Now, I was kind of raw earlier and told y'all stuff that I normally don't say, but God is kind of leading me to start just saying stuff because y'all need to know. But I want y'all to know this is real. What I'm talking about is real. I don't want anybody in here to take it lightly. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to understand it. But most importantly, I want y'all to be able to move past these things. Your childhood trauma, it just can't keep doing this to you. Please hear me. What happened to you, it just can't stay at the forefront of your mind. God's power is God's power. The power of the Holy Ghost is able to make you a new creation. You got to stop having these roadblocks. Listen, you're not that person. That's not you. You got to be able to tell the devil, that's not me. I'm not that guy anymore. I got to get past this. So when I say this is for real, that's what I mean. Nothing wrong with coming up here. I want you to come up here. But I also want you to have victory. Amen. Amen. Have victory in Jesus. Victory. Now, hug somebody and say, I got victory. In Jesus Christ. We got to be victorious. Hallelujah. 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 It's got to have victory. Some of y'all need to delete some of your social media back when you was famous or trying to be. Amen. D delete it. That ain't who you, if that's not who you used to be, why you advertising that? I used to be in the witchcraft. You still got your witchcraft stuff up. You need to delete that. Amen. Delete them pictures with your first husband if you own the second one. Why you got them pictures up? What's that up? What's that about? Amen. No, I'm just being real. We got to get past this stuff and move on. Look at somebody say, move on. Man, we at the end of the world. We can't keep hitting these roadblocks. Amen. Amen.